Venez, je vous emmène découvrir Michel et Augustin qui font des petits sablés ronds et bons. Vous allez voir, ils sont hyper sympas. Je ne lui jamais voici que quand je vais chez mon coiffeur. Ah Sinon, tout le monde va croire que je suis une cervelée et une fausse blonde. Donc, enfin, une fausse brune. Oh, C'est pas vrai, là, dans son sein. Ce soir, je vais assister au showcase de Taylor Momsen. Il y a écouté son album et il y a écouté un artiste sur scène, voir euh, qu'est-ce qu'elle donne sur scène en fait, qu'est-ce qu'elle a dans le bide. C'est une star, donc euh, voilà, moi je ne suis rien, je suis juste une petite journaliste dans mon coin. Je pense qu'on est juste sur deux planètes complètement différentes. Thanks for getting the record, you guys. <laughs> you wanna die. I'll never be good enough. You make me wanna die. And everything you love will burn up in the light. And every time I look inside of your eyes, you make me wanna die. J'avais un avis plutôt négatif à la base. Euh, à savoir l'actrice qui se met à pousser la chansonnette, bon ok on a tous vu ça. J'ai écouté l'album, je me suis dit ah, il y a quand même quelque chose. Et là, de l'entendre chanter, d'entendre sa voix, elle a une vraie voix, elle a une vraie présence, elle a un vrai échange avec le public. Euh, voilà, c'est plutôt une belle découverte. You make me wanna die And everything you love Will burn up in the light And every time I look inside of your eyes You make me wanna die Dès que tu travailles pour un titre de presse féminine, en l'occurrence Cosmo, effectivement, les gens ont tendance à croire que tu es une dinde décérébrée. Cosmo, euh, ah ouais, euh, moi je le lis dans la salle d'attente de mon dentiste. Oui. Alors c'est pas une honte aussi violente que pour un people, tu vois, mais il y a quand même ce petit côté non assumé de euh, non, non, moi je ne lis pas un magazine féminin, non. Est-ce que Taylor Homsen est une inconnue pour l'actrice de Cosmo Non, pas franchement. Euh, je pense qu'elles sont complètement hystériques à l'idée qu'on puisse euh, voilà, avoir une interview avec elles. Ce qu'on a fait, c'est qu'on a, on a impliqué la community manager de Cosmopolitan sur, euh, sur cette euh, interview. On leur a expliqué qu'on les invitait à poser des questions à Taylor Momsen directement. Donc euh, non seulement Taylor Momsen n'est pas une inconnue pour la lectrice de Cosmopolitan, mais en plus elles sont euh, super ravies qu'on puisse euh, les inclure euh, dans l'interview. Moi, personnellement, je suis plutôt spontanée, etc. Mais quand tu rencontres une telle pointure, tu t'assures quand même d'avoir un minimum de connaissances sur la question. Essayer d'en savoir vraiment le plus possible sur elle et pouvoir synthétiser ses infos après. Et puis, évidemment, après, je vais écouter son album. Je vais essayer de voir un petit peu ce qui me plaît. Je vais essayer de trouver des euh, peut-être des influences qu'elle aurait eues dans l'élaboration de ses chansons. Il y a beaucoup de gens qui disent ouais, il y a une vraie légitimité à ce que Taylor Momsen passe de l'actrice la, à la chanteuse. Donc ça m'intrigue et c'est pour ça que j'ai envie de la rencontrer. Les stars m'impressionnent, mais je ne suis pas dans le délire du fan. C'est-à-dire que j'ai toujours peur de les déranger en me disant ça doit être super gonflant d'avoir que ce soit un journaliste, un fan, quelqu'un qui te dit 50 fois par jour oh, j'adore ce que tu fais, c'est génial Et puis c'est bien de garder son libre arbitre et d'arriver quand même peut-être à, à poser des questions pas forcément consensuelles, pas forcément complètement lisses. Et puis on n'a pas envie de poser les questions que les 50 autres journalistes qu'on rencontre après vont poser. Ou les qualificatifs hein, qui pourraient s'appliquer à Taylor Momsen. Très rock. Moi je la sens un peu chippy. Est-ce que c'est à cause de son rôle dans Gossip Girl Je ne sais pas. Mais voilà, je sens qu'il y a une petite chippie, en fait, euh, derrière, dans le bon sens du terme. Une fille qui suit les tendances, qui aime, euh, qui aime la mode, qui aime les vêtements. On sent quand même qu'il y a une recherche dans son look. Rock, chippie et mode. I assume you must love clothes since a lot of journalists keep talking to you about it and they don't see you always as a singer. What is the message you want to say to these people? I really I love music. 
and they do it because they love it and don't judge it before you come see it for yourself because that's not fair you know yeah, it's true. at least give it a chance and you might be surprised yeah you know I, I like acting too I very much enjoy it I've, I've done it for so long that it's kind of a part of me at this point but music is it's a whole other yeah. level what is your favorite swear word fuck absolutely and cunt I love the word cunt I don't know why we can't say it in America. It's like really yeah, offensive yeah. there. I, 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 and I say it all the time and people get so offended and I don't really understand why. There's a comic named Jim Jeffries. He's Australian and he goes, in America you have, we say the word cunt. You can't say cunt in America, but you say motherfucker. And if you think about okay. that, you're talking about yeah, a boy right. fucking his mom. And it's way worse. I've seen that you wrote all the songs on your city. Uh, when do you write and where do you have some places when where you can find your inspiration? If you knew where to find it, it'd be a lot easier to write yeah, a record, I guess. you know? <laughs> um, but I wrote, I mean, I, I wrote a lot at night for this record because I was shooting Gossip Girl and writing the record and recording it and, and all at the same time. So it was kind of crazy schedule. <laughs> Technically, I guess, it really early in the morning from like generally like eight o'clock at night, nine o'clock at night to like three or four in the morning because that was when I had off from Gossip Girl because I worked all day on the show and then would work all night on the record and I kind of didn't sleep for like two years. Well, wow. Yeah, I, <laughs> I didn't collapse. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> I'm still going. Ben and I wrote the record together. He plays guitar as well. But um, we wrote it for two years, I guess. Mm -hmm. So we took uh, our time with it and really meticulously, I mean, perfected. It's difficult to write a record when especially when you have my standards. I have really high standards and I can't even explain how how every single thing on the record down to like the mix like I was completely involved in and completely did. So it's you know it's really my baby. Should you not what I want you got to take everything I've got take the sink take the dry can make you feel in, it can relax you, it can in, in fact do the exact opposite. But you know, there's something you know cathartic about writing and, and thinking, yeah. But it's also can be very unsettling and you know, because to write honestly about whatever it is, you know, it takes a lot of looking into yourself and the looking at all the shit and <laughs> you know, that you know, it can be um, kind of unnerving at times. And it's not difficult for your parents, I mean, because it's difficult for them to read things about you or see pictures they don't want to see. Well, it's all bullshit, you know. I've read the most fabricated things about myself. It's insane. So, you know, they know that it's all, none of it's real. So, yeah, you know, they know who I am. They don't need to read about me online. There's certain aspects of it that, that are strange. It's still, like, still shocking at times. You know, like, paparazzi is still, it's always unnerving and a little, like, it's invasive, but you know, you get used to it and it is what it is. It's just another part, another thing that goes along with the job. What is the city you would offer to someone you like? Which sums up who you are, what you like, what you love. Well, Apart you from yours, of course. Well, I can't just pick one record, but yeah. I would, I mean, the first thing I would do if, if someone said, you know, what music should I give? I'd give them every Beatles record. That's the first thing. I'll leave it at that because my list will keep going on. I'll just name every, I'll name every classic rock band. And <laughs> John Lennon died today. There's like a tribute down the street. It was cute. John Lennon and the, and the Beatles are the reason I wanted to write songs. They're the reason I wanted to be a musician. So they're mm. everything. You know, I used to sit in the basement and play record. Like my dad had a big vinyl record collection. He used to just put records on when I was sick. I got sick a lot as a kid. Um, so I'd lay in the basement with the records playing and he'd come in and put a new one on and I'd come in and put a new one on while I slept in the... So even when I was sleeping, like I'd put beat, <laughs> like he made cassette tapes of Beatles stuff and I'd fall asleep to it. So it was even running through my brain while I was asleep. So it got engraved in there, yeah. You, are you guys going to come to the show on Thursday? Yeah, of course. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Sweet. I'm so excited for the show. It's our first like proper show in Paris. Mm -hmm. We played this, this street for John Galliano, but you know, it's our first one with a real stage and a real sound system and actual tickets, so it'll be fun. <laughs>